Welcome back, everyone, to the Bunker in Downsview Park and this Layer9.ca presentation of the Quad City Chaos 2015 simulcast on WFTDA.tv. I'm the Derby Nerd here alongside Captain Lou Albamo to call the Battle of Ontario. Battle of Ontario, Rideau Valley Roller Girl Vixens against Toronto Roller Derby CN Power. Last time they met was at the 2013 edition of this event, and at that game... Rideau Valley came away the winners. The first time the Vixens ever beat CN Power. That's right. It was a 13-point victory after four consecutive losses. It's been two years almost to the day since these two teams last met. Let's see how things play out here on the track at the bunker in Downsview Park. Ballerina taking the star for CN Power. CN Power in the white and pink. Soul Wrecker taking the star for the black and gold of the Rideau Valley Vixens. Pushing out the front's going to be Soul Wrecker. First lead jammer of the game to the Vixens. And Ballerina having a hard time at turn number two, getting knocked to the inside. Resets very quickly, and she finally is through in her full first pass as a full lap to go, though, and Soul Wrecker already picking up points at turn number two. Yeah, Soul Wrecker trying to fight her way through. She gets her hands on the hips before Ballerina can get around. Ballerina actually picking up a single point as she crashed the back of the back, but three points for Soul Wrecker. Three to one. First blood to the Vixens again, Derby Nerd. Both teams 1-0 so far on the opening day of the 2015 Quad City Chaos. The Vixens opened up with an upset victory over Steel City Roller Girls, 165-142. to Toronto just defeated Boston a few hours ago, 229-174. to Two big upsets for the Canadian clubs here at the Quad City Chaos. And on the 1234 Jammer Line, 1234 Skate Go Jammer Line, is going to be Mad Megs going up against Shania Payne for Rideau Valley. Mad Megs getting knocked to the ground. Shania Payne getting cycled to the back of the pack. Randy Rumble heading to the penalty box and lead jammer for CN Power. That is Mad Megs. This is Mad Megs' first year with CN Power transferring from Alliston's uh, Misfit Militia. And she was huge earlier for Boston. Shania Payne missed the whole second half of their game versus Steel City. Both jammers come in to score. Megs calling it off. Not in time. No, oh, Shania Payne out of head of steam went airborne. Hopped that apex. Picked up three points of her own. Four points to CN Power. That's going to put the score at 6-5. to five. Yeah, you're talking about Mad Megs. What a fantastic pickup for CN Power. She sort of has dwelled as an unknown in the in the WFDDA sanctioned yeah. style of games, but well known within Ontario. CN Power able to pick her up, put her out there on the line, already paying dividends in this tournament. That's right. She uh, grew up in Allison, Ontario with the jammer of note for CN Power right now. That is 5678 Belfast in the white. And working on a two wall at the front of the pack as Lackey to beat finally does on turn number one. Another lead for CN Power. Yeah, nice last ditch effort by Lackey to. Try to keep her in the pack, but unsuccessful. And getting cycled back again is awesome. Great defense by CN Power. Oh, nice clean pass for five for Belfast. This is a completely rebuilt offensive jammer rotation for CN Power. Only Ballerina returning from last year's roster. Although Belfast was a late call up, did play for this team in the playoffs and did very well in a game against Arizona. Austin finally out of the pack. Jam's going to get called off. Another four points. We have our first lead change of the game. CN Power putting up a solid nine-point jam, extending the score to 14-6 to six with 27 minutes remaining in the first half. Lots of time. Expecting a lot of back and forth as we have seen all day. Exciting action throughout day one of Quad City Chaos. You mentioned that the last time these two teams faced off, it was a 13-point difference. The four previous games in the two years before that, it uh, was an average differential of 126 points for Toronto. So this Rideau Valley team really came on their own in 2013 and have been on the rise since. Soul record jamming again for Rideau Valley and another pickup in the offseason. That's Smoka Cola for CN Power again coming out of the Misfit Militia. It's going to be Soul Wrecker getting lead and Smoka Cola with one to beat at the front. That's Reyes knocking to the ground and the Vixens blockers cycle up and drag her to the back. Coming up on the pack now is Wrecker slices her way through the pack. The five fingers, four fingers go up in the air. And oh, maybe some foolery there from the CN Power Jammer. She had yeah. her helmet cover off and her point was not given to her. Yeah, a little star stash action. A little star pass actually, it did go to Santa Muerta. She's able to stop the bleeding, no additional points. We're gonna go, looks like Julius Caesar is going over to fix the scoring perhaps. 
Let's see if an additional point is added. Is. Yes, indeed, Derby Nerd. So 14 to 11 is your score. Three-point differential. CN Power in the lead again. CN Power in white. They're the hosts of this tournament. Rideau Valley in the black with a bit of gold. They are at 11 points, 25 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. This is the sixth ever Quad City Chaos here, hosted by Toronto Roller. It'll be the fourth time that the Rideau Valley Vixens have taken part. And lead jammer now goes to Shania Payne, 3-2 are the leads for the Rideau Valley Vixens early on in the opening half of this battle for Ontario. There was a nice little hit by Nasher, who managed to get her up on one foot. She couldn't keep her balance, went down, had to cycle herself back. She did get back through the pack again. She is heading in on a scoring pass, still unable to get through is Smoka Cola for CM Power. Smoka Cola having a hard time as Shania Pan burns around the outside and turns one and two, picks up five points. Another lead change going to occur here for the Vixens, up by one. Make that two. Smoka Cola has taken the star off her helmet, so she's working her way through as an inactive jammer, but oh. picks up a track cut. It's going to be a power jam for Rideau Valley. Kind of what they did against Steel City earlier today. Sort of hung in there against the higher ranked team and then struck when the iron was hot. And this has up been big points. Yeah, this has been an opening day of upsets here at the QCC. Both Toronto upsetting Boston. We saw Rideau Valley upsetting Steel City earlier on, and they are off to a hot start here right now with the power jam opportunity for Shania Payne. It's her second year with the Vixens. She was extraordinary last year in the playoffs and picking up right where she left off. Aims to kill being sent down to the penalty box as well, joining Nash and the Smasher. Only two left on the track for CN Power. Nice hit out, though, by Misery May. Yeah, both Misery May and Megaboosh doing a great job of keeping Shania Payne in that pack. Power jam is over and through on our initial scoring pass, or on her initial pass anyways, it's Mocha Cola. Five more points though picked up, so a big lead here early on for the Rideau Valley Vixens after a 15 point jam, 26, 14, six and a half into this opening half. We have seen start. relatively low scoring games today, lots of defense. Uh, and you know that defense being aided by offense, you get both jammers getting out of the pack at the same time. It limits the amount of points that either team can score. That keeps the score nice and low. This time we're going to see Ballerina taking the star going up against Melanie Austin for the Rideau Valley Vixens. Oh, and Austin getting called on a back block right away. It's going to be a power jam now for CN Power. This will even things up. And let's see if Ballerina jamming can keep this going here for CN Power. Down by 12. That yeah, Ballerina completing her initial pass and halfway around the track before Austin could even get to the penalty box. Ballerina coming back in the direction of gameplay is going to send Reyes to the penalty box. That'll lighten the blocker load, make it easier for Ballerina, and she's through for five, Derby Nerd. And that's 26 19 now. Slow pack moving on the second straightaway CN Power, electing to play a little passively right now, see if they make a move as their jammer approaches. And they do. Opening up the inside. Jammer taking the outside. Bala makes a nice little juke. Rudolph to beat on the inside. Reinforcements coming up. Sister Disaster gets a shoulder in, but Ballerina patiently makes her way through. Picks up five more points. We've got ourselves a two-point game. Two-point game. Power jam is over. Austin trying to skip her way through this pack. Melanie Austin having a strong weekend for the Vixens, taking some huge hits from big blockers on the CN Power team and staying in bounds and staying upright, finally getting knocked out by Ames to kill, and that's gonna allow another four-point pass for Ballerina, just four on that pass. So that's a 14-point jam so far for CN Power. They have retaken the lead, still stuck in that pack. Austin just getting ground down, and now Ballerina getting cycled back by Rudolph and Reyes. Finally out is Austin. We did see a bit of an extended bench. The Rideau Valley Vixens known for riding a short bench. We saw a bit of an extension earlier on against uh, Steel City, but they've been really keeping things tight here early on against one of their chief rivals in Toronto. So a huge jam for CN Power and Ballerina. 18 points. They had 14 to start to the jam. They roll up to 32 to the Rideau Valley Vixens. And we're going to get an official review on the, the Vixens coach, Coach Adam well, probably one of the most experienced coaches in Canada now. He's been doing this for a long time. Uh, very crafty, Absolutely. wily on the bench. 
Uh, official review this early in a half. He really must have seen something that he did not like and thought that he could win on. Again, there's 21 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first half. Often you save those official reviews until a bit later just in case, but I have a feeling Coach Adams saw something he did not like, so we'll have to see what the result is. We do have announcer refs in this tournament, so we will get a little update for you once we find out the information. Yeah, m mentioning his experience, uh, last year, of course, these Rideau Valley Vixens were the darlings of the Division II tournament, winning uh, one of the divisionals in Kitchener-Waterloo before losing to Detroit at the WFTDA Championships in the D2 final. So they gained a lot of experience at, the, at higher levels of play this year, and this is their introduction to D1, and they have uh, made themselves known here. Yeah, I mean, they come into this tournament ranked number 39 in the WFTDA, Toronto number 28. Again, Rideau Valley has knocked off the number 29 team, Steel City, earlier today. It was a very close game, 165-142, uh, made much closer on that final jam of yep. the game. But Rideau Valley was, was quite dominant in that second half. Yeah. Their defense was excellent. Uh, their jammer rotation working really well. We, we mentioned uh, Austin sort of coming in as the, the third jammer in this jammer rotation, but in the past, it's kind of been Soul Wrecker and Austin doing the majority of the work, and yeah. sometimes they would fill in with other jammers. But the addition of Shania Payne last year to the roster really added a lot to, Absolutely. to the, the, the offensive potential that they had. I think it really picked up both Soul Wreckers games and Austin's game because it was another jammer that everybody had to watch. Yeah, and uh, not much of a change to the roster from the earlier game either. Boozy and uh, Jessica Rabbit are out. Uh, Anderson and Kiki Von Carnage in for the Vixens. So that's a slight change and perhaps more experienced blockers now in the pack. Soul Wrecker out picking up lead jammer here for the Vixens. Mad Meg's jamming in the white for CN Power. She's having some trouble with this Vixens pack at turn number two. Battling nicely now, one to beat. Brennan goes in for a hit, misses it on the outside. Mad Megs gets through in her first pass, a full lap behind Soul Wrecker. Soul Wrecker getting knocked out by Misery May, forced to call it off. Nice defense from CM Power to save one. Louie, get an update for us on that official review. Yeah, every single point matters in this game. The official review was Rito Valley Vixens looking for a track cut on the white jammer. Track cut did not occur therefore the official review is lost they do not retain the review they are done with the reviews for the first half of this game they get a, they get one in the second half but for the next 20 minutes they will not be officially reviewing anything <laughs> on the vixen side score 32 to 29 three point gap it's going to be belfast taking on shania Payne. Belfast cutting right up through the middle. Shania Payne sees a lane on the inside. Jukes in quickly past Lady Gaggy. Another lead jammer picked up for the Vixens. Two in a row now as Belfast working a two wall in the second straightaway trying to get through. Gets knocked to the inside. Forced to recycle. Lackey one to beat now. Finally beats her on the outside. Yeah, Belfast doing that stripping the star off her oh. helmet and then putting it back on when she escapes from the pack. Shania Payne's going to call it off. Four points for the Vixens. They're going to retake the lead with a 33-32 differential is one point at the moment so lead change is back and forth Shania Payne really good at baiting the blockers to the outside on that turn one yeah. two apex yeah and then just slice slicing and hopping to the inside and finding that gap that occurs when you just draw the blockers out there really tough to defend that that wide curve yeah and Shania Payne just instinctually knowing that an That's unbelievable. The way to go. Considering how little experience she does have. Back on the track now, it's Smoke Cola jamming for CN Power, trying to work the outside. It is Sister Disaster getting a jam. She jammed quite a bit earlier against Steel City. She does get knocked out. Dragged back by Nasher. Both jammers having a hard time getting through these packs. Hannah Murphy, last line of defense. Goes for a hit on Smoke Cola, misses it. Smoke Cola is your lead jammer for CN Power. Off to the race, there's only one to beat at the front. That one is Nash and the Smasher. She's going to have to let Sister Disaster go. Here comes Smoka Cola on her scoring pass. Smoka's through, calls it off. Sister Disaster was naturally a jammer early, early in her career. But since about 2010, has slowly been transitioning into the more pack play for Rideau Valley. Yeah, and she's really the a Hulk smash kind of blocker out there. She really, <laughs> yep. she really is a dominant physical force when she's in the pack. She doesn't really change it that much when she jams anymore. <laughs> so it really takes a lot of defensive teams by surprise. I think Steel City was really shocked when they substituted her in after Shania Payne went out with a, a bit of an injury earlier today. Um, 
CN Power ready for her that time, though, and CN Power retakes the lead 36 to 33. Unbelievable start to this one. Ballerina back out now, just gets a, out in ahead of Soul Wrecker. Soul Wrecker makes a nice little juke on turn number two around Santa Muerte to get through. Only about a half a lap back. CN Power had a tough game against Boston. Seven lead changes in the opening half before they were able to put that Boston team away. So they're used to this tight back and forth action. They will not be phased by it as they Single weren't there. Point. Single point picked up by CN Power. So nice little Russian, Russian quit it. You grab that single point, get it called off, set the jam up again. 37-33 is the score in favor of the hosts CN Power from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. 17 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. We're going to get Mad Megs taking the star for this. Skaters in white, CN Power, and it's going to be Shania Payne in black for Rideau Valley Vixens. And Shania Payne immediately sees something she likes on the inside, able to get through, but not in front of Mad Megs, who is your lead jammer. And Shania Payne engaging a jammer on jammer battle at turn number four, and that's going to force a call off. Nice work. And Mad Megs again, uh, lots of agility, lots of strength, but she is she is willing to, to mix it up in there. She, she has done a fair amount of blocking yeah. in her time as well. A uh, very physical jammer, so she was willing to go one-on-one -on -one with Shania Payne. Shania Payne not backing down at all in that jam. No, I think it was more of a matter when uh, Mad Megs came to CN Powers that they lost so many jammers to retirement uh, in the offseason that they just needed to put her in that role, and she has excelled here on the opening day of the 2015 Quad City Chaos. Belfast now jamming on the 1234 Skate Company start line against Sister Disaster once again with the star for the Rideau Valley Vixens. Looks like Austin has been taken out of the rotation for a bit. We'll see if she gets added in later on in the half. Yeah, she is sitting on the end of the bench with an ice pack on her nose, so we will keep you updated uh, as we can about that. Scarcasm now going one-on-one -on -one against Sister Disaster at turn one. Finally out of play, forced to let her go. Scarcasm having a very good game against... Oh, insubordination. Sister Disaster picking up two penalties oh. on that jam. An insubordination. I'll check and see what the first one was. I did not see the penalty occur. Yeah, I did not either, but she did get a penalty, so that's going to be a full minute power jam now with Belfast on the line for CN Power. Having a really hard time, though, against Jamie's got a gun, Reyes and Lackey, and it looks like Reyes may have just drawn a track cut on Belfast. Nice work from the veteran blocker, and that will even things up and will trade off jammers in the penalty box. Brief power jam coming up for the Vixens. Yeah, get the jammer switcheroo on. It was a blocking out of bounds that Sister Disaster picked up. Ah. That sent her to the penalty box. But you know, it'll actually be Belfast coming back out because there was two penalties, so it just That's erases, right. the, erases the first one. And the, there we go, erases the second one. The Sister Disaster now out of the box and Belfast straight back into the box. Jamie's got a gun, drawing a nice cut there. A graduate of Montreal Roller Derby's junior program. Showing that track sense gain from uh, the youthful experience picked up on the track during that uh, her time in the junior program. So Belfast with a back block, power jam back to the Vixens. Sister Disaster fighting her way through. Only 10 seconds left in this jam. Nobody has scored anything so <laughs> far, Derby Nerd. Messy jam. Oh, yeah. Lots of penalties in the pack as well for CN Power. Hosers picked up two penalties on this jam alone. So we're going to have to watch that. And I'm seeing a fist in the air from Julius Caesar. That's no points. So wow. it's zero point jam. Two minutes. Two minutes. Hard fought battle out there. Jammers getting worn out. Those are those are those tough jams. I mean, it's we're gonna get a timeout. And that gives me an opportunity to thank KT Tape, one of our sponsors here at this year's Quad City Chaos. Electric, uh, elastic sports tape for pain relief and support available at the Toronto Roller Derby merch table if you're here at the bunker or if you're going to be coming by at all this weekend. If not, you can go to kttape.com. And, of course, this team timeout is brought to you by Roller Derby Athletics. To transform your game, visit them at rollerderbyathletics.com. Yeah, so 37 to 33, 14 minutes and 6 seconds remaining in the first half. Tight, tight game once again, Derby Nerd, at the Quad City Chaos. Unbelievable. What a showing it has been for the Vixens. I, uh, I think there were some questions, certainly about Toronto coming in as well. This has got to be considered a strong showing for them too. There was a huge changes in the offseason, as we mentioned, virtually their whole jammer rotation. <laughs> leaving the team and leaving a massive gap, but 
Uh, they've managed to make some nice replacements with some uh, transfers from some of the strong roller derby leagues we have here in Ontario. Yeah, and getting Ballerina back from, yep. from injury last year, that, that is really helping as well. Um, yeah, I think, I think for, for fans of Toronto, it's, it's mostly just been an unknown. We did not know if Toronto was going to be able to perform this year. We, yeah. didn't, we didn't know what it was going to be like. There's a, like you said, a fairly different roster from last year. But Toronto, with a very deep league, able to draw, yep. and again, able to draw from leagues around. Jammed away is a power start for Rito Valley and Soul Wrecker taking the star. And Misery May out there leading that blocking trio for CN Power. Speaking of a deep league, she is a graduate of the Bruisers program. Oh, getting called for an out-of-play hit, though, just as she knocks Soul Wrecker out of bounds. But Soul Wrecker is going to pick up lead jammer as Belfast gets, comes back onto the track. Belfast now pushing the walls at turns two, trying to break away in the second straightaway. She has the star off her helmet and in her hand. It is a stash, though. No pass has been made. Record through for four points for Rito Valley. Once again, no fifth point for the jammer pass. Uh, we'll have to see if there's going to be an adjustment made there. A little vigorous oh. on her attempt to get through again. Picks up a back block. Third penalty in a row for Belfast. Power jam once again for Rito Valley. You just do not want to give them this much room. They will run away. And they have the game. retaken the lead now, 42-37, 13 minutes to go. Oh, and Soul Wrecker getting called on a high block. She will be sent to the <laughs> box. So both teams running into some early jammer penalties in this game. Five jammer penalties in the wow. last two jams. And that is something and we are going to... Oh. minute. Make that six, six jammer penalties. She did not leave the track quickly enough. Shortened her distance to the penalty box. That is an insubordination. She'll be in there for a full minute. Belfast with 26 seconds to uh, take advantage of this, and that's her initial pass. And we have seen that call a few times this game. Seems to come in trends, in waves in WFTDA. You must leave the track. Even if you are unopposed, you must leave that track and take the long road to the penalty box. Belfast now around on scoring. Rudolph's going to be sent to the penalty box, so no pivot on the track for the Vixens. Brennan is that last line of defense. Belfast works her out of play, gets through five points for CN Power, and we have a tie game. Well, just as a see if seizure indicates any points, we're going to get an official review on the CN Power bench. They have not used theirs yet. Three points. Oh, there it is. Three points for the Vixens, so they will... Retain the lead, but it is a slim three-point lead, 45 to 42. Rideau Valley over CN Power with 11 minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the first half. We are in, a in an official review for CN Power, which, of course, gives us a chance to give some love to our sponsors. And Wicked Skatewear loves to make you look and feel fabulous. Plus, we like glitter and neon, a lot of neon. Visit WickedSkateware.com and hashtag WickedSkateware to experience the shenanigans. And if you know Wicked Skate Skateware, you know <laughs> shenanigans are always involved. They love shenanigans. Also gives us an opportunity to talk about the ref crew who is currently convening on this official review. We've got an all-star referee crew here all weekend. The uh, crew head ref for this particular crew in this game is Patricide from Montreal Roller Derby. Toronto Roller Derby's Penny Whistler is the inside pack ref. Our two jammer refs are from Zadork from the Mad Roland Dolls and Julius Caesar from Chicago Outfit. Our three OPRs are Duke Skellington, also from the Outfit. Parking Lot from Hammer City Roller Girls and Davey Darko from Rock City Roller Derby. Our alt ref for this game is Drop Dead Gorgon and our crew head and SO for this crew is 90 Degrees Johnson from the Rock City Roller so Derby. Yeah, the lowest level of certification is a two and that too is pretty darn good. I've seen him yeah. reffing a fair amount. Yes, he is expect often here in Toronto as well, Davey Darko. I expect to see him continue to climb. So yes, very high level refereeing at Quad City Chaos. We are well blessed with the officiating here. Power start now for Toronto. Ballerina working all alone on the track. Nice move by the Hannah Murphy and she draws a cut. Another jammer penalty. And to be honest, these are a lot of these are just being created by excellent pack work from these two teams. Misery May now on the track, breaking through that three wall. And here comes Soul Wrecker with a brief power jam. Scarcasm leading the defense. Misery May guarding that inside line. Both graduates of the Bay Street Bruisers program here at Toronto. Nice move from Santamware to drag Soul Wrecker back to beyond turn number one. 
Rudolph back on the track. All four blockers out there now for Rito Valley on this power jam. The Santa was really on for the Boston game as well, really taking care of jammers all game long. And a big hit there on Wrecker. He's going to send her to the penalty box on a low block. Another power jam being traded off now, just as Bala's jam was naturally coming to its, or penalty was coming to its conclusion. Yeah, Bala with a smile and shake of her head as she left the penalty box, realizing that she is going to be in the power jam now. We'll go the full two minutes once again in this jam. Ballerina threw on her initial pass. Just past the hips of Rudolph there, and CM Power has the jam. Or the pack stopped at turn number three. And making some moves now to open up the inside lane. Ballerina now goes alone against Rudolph, gets knocked to the inside, dragged back. Reyes heading to the penalty box for the Vixens. Rudolph goes in for a big hit, swings, misses five points for Ballerina. Lead change now with CM Power back on top. Two point differential, Ballerina coming around on another scoring pass. Up against the front two wall of Vixens. That's Sister Disaster and Rudolph desperately trying to hold her back. Ballerina skipping through on the outside. She's going to pull another four points for CN Power. Wrecker, though, back on the track, engaging immediately with the pack. Gets a high hit on Misery May, but I'm sorry, Misery May being called off for that form. It looked like she'd taken a hit. Yeah, it was, it was one of those. Those questionable calls. They're <laughs> right on the line. You have to wonder who's going to get what. Two points for Ballerina. Two more points for CN Power. Now at 53 to Rideau Valley's 45. Chaos in the penalty department. A timeout being taken by <laughs> Rideau Valley Roller Girls Vixens. The team timeout is brought to you by Roller Derby Athletics. Visit them at rollerderbyathletics.com and transform your game. Eight points is the difference. It seems huge <laughs> in this game so far. Wow, unbelievable start to this one. And this is what we've been expecting. An unbelievable day of Derby here. The D1 games have been absolutely unbelievable. Boston, Pittsburgh, Steel City, and uh, Toronto and Rideau Valley all, uh, I mean, relatively evenly matched in the rankings as well, but playing much closer than those rankings would indicate. That's right. I mean, it's early on in the season, too. Everyone's getting their legs under them. A little bit of rust, perhaps, on, on some of these teams. This is the first games for Rideau Valley, first games for CN Power, first games for Boston. Steel City actually had a game against Charlottesville, right. which they won, but it was a little closer than expected in that game as well. They've lost their first two games of this tournament. You know when they face off against Toronto tomorrow, they're really going to want to, to, yeah. to get, a, get a win. And they had a very close game at the Evansville tournament, Division One tournament right. last year. 14 points 14 was the difference points. in that one for Toronto. So they'll be looking for some revenge tomorrow for sure. They also had a regular season game that was only 20 points. So two and, evenly matched And that teams. one went the other way. That's right. For, yeah, for Steel City. All right. Back underway. Shania Payne quickly works the outside to pick up lead. And... Uh, Smoka Cola also threw on the outside. These two jammers very similar in stature and style. It'll be interesting to see if they match up more this game. Payne goes right into that three wall, bounces off it, gets a few points. All four All calls it off. All four points. Just finding that seam, wiggling her way through, cuts the deficit in half. What was eight is now four, and the score is 53 to 49 in favor of CN Power. Nine minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the half. And you know, talking about roster changes, though, uh, to, be, to be honest, Toronto's really the only uh, team of the four that has gone through a lot of roster change. This uh, Vixens lineup is virtually intact from the one that uh, went on that nice run, the D2 playoffs. Okay, Boston, for sure, is, is very similar, and Steel City really only losing Athena. The rest of the team is fairly similar to to what we saw last year as well. So, All right. Power holding up well. Ostentatious back on the line, and she is going to have a power jam as Mad Meg's drawn into a cut. More nice work by the Rideau Valley Vixens to draw these cuts, and Ostentatious back on the track after missing a few jams for injury. So great to see her back out there. So once again, the power jams go back and forth. This time it's the Vixens with the advantage. Austin looking to get through, but getting dragged back to the back of the pack. Great defense on the part of CN Power. Rennie Rumble working that outside line very nicely. Hoser is at the front of that defense, working well with Santa Muerte and Misery May, killing off this penalty and forcing a call off. Nice penalty kill from CN Power, limiting the damage, but we do have another lead change. <laughs> another lead change, five points. Breaks that differential of four, brings it back down to one, but this time in the favor of the Vixens. 54 to 53, seven minutes and 50 seconds remaining in. This will be a power start 
with Mad Meg still in the penalty box. Rideau Valley sending Soul Wrecker number 55 to the line. I've actually lost track of the lead changes so far in this game. We will try and get that for you at half. A nice hit from Megaboosh. Oh, couldn't quite push Wrecker out of bounds. Nice footwork from the Vixens jammer. Mad Megs, though, back on the track. Quickly advancing through. One to beat now, Batema. And Megs is through in her initial pass. And Wrecker back around and scoring. Forces her way through, calls it off. Three points. Uh, Bush doing a great job of pushing Wrecker to the inside, saving that final point for CN Power in a game this close. Every point matters. Defensive efforts on like that, very important in these games. They add up jam after jam. So 57 to 53 is the score. Again, Rito Valley in the lead. Nice work on the part of Mega Bush or Mega Mouth, depending if she's playing in <laughs> America land. 641 remaining in the half. Shania Payne taking the star against Ballerina. And Shania Payne now working against the three wall at the front of that pack. Ballerina at the back has all four Vixens blockers to contend with. Scarcasm is the last line of defense. Can't hold Shania Payne back. Lee Jammer once again for the Rideau Valley Vixens. Pantios are picking up a track cut. That sends her to the penalty box. Lightens the blocker load. That's what allowed uh, Shania Payne to get through. Ballerina out as well now. Shania Payne is going to get sliced her way through that pack. Pick up all four points. Extend Rideau Valley's lead to 61 to 53. Eight points separate these teams. This time the eight points are on the Vixen That's right. Side. We've had a flip of eight. Eight-point lead for Toronto now completely changed in the 16-0 run for the Rideau Valley Vixens, who are leading here early on. Part of a wave of Canadian teams perhaps taking over the D1 this year. Look out for Canada. Yeah, Calgary doing very well. There could be a fair number of teams visiting American sites during September. Ostentatious now bursting off of the 1234 Skate Company start line. Now working with only two blockers, but she's having a hard time getting through. And that's going to buy Smoka Cola some time. Gets by Batema, goes on the outside, is one to beat now. Batema recycling at the front of that pack. Brennan comes in with a big hit. Cannot knock Smoka Cola out, and she picks up Lee Jammer for CN Power. And that was a long run without Lee Jammer status, so good job for them get back in this one. It's so strong on her skates, just absorbing that hit on the mat and just using every inch of room on that apex. She gets through, calls it off, picks up three, four points for CN Power. That cuts that eight points down to four, 61 to 57, under five minutes remaining. We would like to give some love to Nerd Roller Skates, Calgary's only quad skate shop, now offering free shipping in Canada with orders over $150. Find them at nerdskates.com and you are watching the 2015 quad city chaos here produced by layer 9.ca simulcast on wftda.tv i'm the derby nerd with captain lou albamo cn power from toronto in the white mad megs is your lead jammer in the black it is the rito valley vixens and soul wreckers your jammer being dragged back by rennie rumble pivot for toronto yeah nice pairing with rennie and santa muerta doing a good job of containing Wrecker and Megs is working her way through. She's got one to beat. That's Murphy. She gets cycled to the inside, and Jamie's got a gun. He's going to draw her a bit back. Nice job once again from Jamie's got a gun. And these Vixens, really nice. At just quick pop backs. Nice little spin move, though, for Mad Megs to get around. The Vixens pack call it off and pick up four points and tie up this game. Well, why not? Why not? Wasn't quite close enough. Can't get closer than a tie. Fifth, 16. Oh, Toronto, sorry, pulling ahead by one on that one. A five point jam for Mad Megs adjusted at the end. Yeah, 62 to 61, so yet another lead change in this first half, three and a half minutes remaining on the 1234 skate code jammer line. There's gonna be Ballerina for CN Power in the white and Shania Payne for Rito Valley in the black. And jammers are off, Ballas found nothing on the inside, comes back out. Now trying to juke her way around the front wall of Vixen's blockers. Shania Payne, those get a burst of speed on the outside as there's a huge collision. Brennan once again, the big hit, and that's gonna allow Shania Payne to get through. Pick up another lead jammer status for the Vixens here late in the first half. Yeah, I believe that was Botema that set that up, put Ballerina off balance, and Brennan finished her to the outside. Boy, those two working very nicely together on the defense here in this one. Shania Payne forced to call it off as she's knocked out of bounds. Not, though, before she gets three points. Nasher the Smasher doing a good job of staying ahead of that pack, keeping her point 
out of Shania Payne's pocket. And those three points once again makes us say that we have ourselves oh. a lead, Jane. 64 to 62, two and a half minutes to go. I was talking to Coach Adam earlier before this game. He says Rideau Valley really gets up to play CN Power. Yeah. It is a, a rivalry that has been going on since the existence of the Vixens, and they really, That's really, right. really get up for these games. Yeah, the Vixens' first game ever was in February 2010 against this CN Power team. Looks like ostentatious, sorry, Melanie Austin being sent off on a forearm. It's going to be a power jam for Smoka Cola and CN Power. Smoka Cola has taken the star off, perhaps looking for a pass. Runny Rumble is the pivot. That's yeah, either a star, it's currently a star stash, but High Block is going to send. For the sand, that's just a disaster to the penalty box. That's going to free it. It is Renny Rumble. So it is an official star pass. Renny Rumble with the first time this game with the star in her helmet. Renny Rumble, though, has been used for star passes in the past. Someone capable of this was once a long time ago a jammer for a house league team here in Toronto Roller Derby. So she does have experience with the star, and she does just pick up five points, help extend Toronto's lead slightly with a minute and a half to go. Murphy with a oh. big hit on Rumble, knocking to the outside. A back block has sent Austin, Austin to the box again. Back-to-back -back power jams perhaps to end the opening half here for Toronto. Nice move by Rennie Rumble. Patience there, waiting for the hole to be opened. As soon as it was, she took it. Five more points on the board for Toronto. Wheels this falling off a bit for the Vixens in the closing seconds of this half. Under a minute to go. Only 35 seconds left, though, on the jam clock. All four Vixens now engaging with Rennie Rumble. Lady Gaga moves up, to fakes some offense as Austin comes back on the pack and immediately runs into a tough three-wall of Toronto defenders. Tries to work her way, gets past Scar Chasm. Big hits, and it looks like... High block to Sister oh. Disaster, <laughs> second one of the jam. Four more points for Renny Rumble as time ticks out on the jam. Unless someone takes a time out, we are going to go into the half. There's only 15 seconds left in the period clock. Not enough time to get another jam in. 81 to 64, a 19 point jam by Renny Rumble on the double power jam in the final jam of the first half. I don't believe anyone's going to take a time out. Time ticks down. We go to the halftime, and what a huge final oh. jam! Biggest jam of the game. Unbelievable. If you were just tuning into Quad City Chaos this evening, shame on you for missing an unbelievable day of roller derby. It's been like this all day, honestly. An absolutely extraordinary tournament. We're seeing it once again. A narrow lead for Toronto. I mean, I, I don't even know if we can talk about a difference in this game. They both have run into penalty troubles. They both have had moments of absolute excellence uh, and then moments of kind of panic as well. This is, uh, this is all true, and it's really the last mistake that was made in that <laughs> half was yep. made by the Vixens, and CN Power took full advantage of it, and that's what you expect uh, a strong team like CN Power to do. Vixens look like they picked up a couple more points, so 81 to 64, 17-point gap. Um, and that's the biggest gap we've seen is. so far of this I game. And it, and it all came on that last jam. We'll have to see if Rideau Valley can reset at the half. Uh, CN Power... They have to be pretty happy with where they are. Yep. I think they'd prefer to have a bit more of a gap. I think so as well. And one thing they have to watch is that they've been drawn into a lot of penalties as well. There's been yes. nice little subtle motions by the uh, the Rideau Valley pack that they've drawn back at just the right, right moment and uh, just have to be a little conscious that they're, this Rideau Valley Vixens pack is very smart and they're going to be yes, looking to do that are. every single time and you cannot give them an inch at all. So we're going to go to halftime. Derby nerd, Captain Lou Obama. We'll come back with some stats and more information and another 30 minutes of roller derby action from Downsview Park at the Quad City Chaos 2015 edition hosted by Toronto Roller Derby. Welcome back, everyone, to uh, the bunker in Downsview Park and the 2015 Quad City Chaos I am the Derby Nerd here with Captain Lou Albamo, and we are at halftime of uh, the Battle of Ontario, as it's been dubbed, between the hosts of Quad City Chaos, the Toronto Roller Derby CN Power, and the Rideau Valley Vixens out of Ottawa, Ontario, and it's been an unbelievable game so far.
I mean, if you're, you're looking at the score right now, it's a 17-point differential, which is pretty close. And you would think, well, you know, I understand what they're saying. 17 points, that's not bad, 81 to 64. That differential <laughs> opened up on the final jam of the first half. There was a 19-point jam by Rennie Rumble. There was a two-point lead before that for the Rideau Valley Vixens. We had 22 jams in the first half. Lead changes in nine of them. Nine. Unbelievable. And 17 points is by far the biggest lead either team has had so far in this game as well. So that's just to give you a sense of the type of game it's been. Uh, now, what about the scoring? What do we have for a scoring update on that first half, Captain Lou? Uh, if you're looking over on the Vixens, you've got Austin Tatius. Oh, sorry, Melanie Austin picking up <laughs> five points. Soul record with 26. Lead score for the Vixens was... Shania Payne with 33 over on CN Power. You got eight for Smoke a Cola, nine for Mad Megs, 14 for Belfast, 19 again for that Star Pass final yeah, jam of right. the first half by Rennie Rumble, and then 31 points for Ballerina again. Strong most game. of those points on two jams. She had an 18 and 11 point jam. So big scoring by, by CN Power when they get a chance. Slight lead for lead jammer status for the Vixens in that first half, 11 to 8. Yep. For penalties, uh, the Vixens also have the edge. 24 penalties for CN Power to 18 for the Rideau Valley Vixens. Uh, seven jammer penalties in total for Toronto to 6, though, for Rideau Valley. So somewhat balanced in that regard, and uh, that is probably what makes up for the score right now. That's right. So going into the second half, uh, both these teams have to start thinking about cleaning up their game. Yep. Uh, it's, it's obviously been the type of game where the team that makes the last mistake is likely the team that is going to win. Uh, the last mistake that was made in the first half was definitely by the Vixens, and that yep. has allowed CN Power to get the, get the lead. And CN Power can play a pretty clean game for the rest of the game. I think they've got a good chance of taking us home, but you know the Vixens are tough to play clean against. They it's are. so tricky. Yes, yeah, smart pack. They're smart at drawing penalties. It's not that they are creating chaos. They are actively trying to create penalties, and they oh, yeah. uh, created a lot of jammer penalties in that first half as well. The matchups have been unbelievable. They've been very, very even all along the board, uh, so it's even going to be hard for these two benches. Very experienced benching staff. This is Flying Brian McMilliam's first game on the bench for CN Power, but he's been around. Anyone in roller derby in Ontario knows he was a coach in the Bruisers for a couple years, coaches up in the Orangeville, so a very experienced uh, bench as well. And of course, Adam Tarasenko, one of the uh, most experienced coaches, as we mentioned in that first half here in our country. That's right, and we are almost ready for action again, and if it was anything like the first half, you don't want to go anywhere. Make right. sure you've had your washroom break because... <laughs> We're going to get 30 more minutes of blistering action between and CN Power and Rito Valley. That's right. And if you happen to miss anything today, uh, the bouts are already archived on Layer9.ca. So catch that earlier phenomenal bout between Steel City and Rito Valley and Toronto and Boston. Every game today so far has been tight. It's been fast. It's been uh, incredible flat track roller derby. And we're about to get underway here in the second half. And on the 1234 Skate Company start line, it's Ballerina, the leading scorer for CN Power against Soul Wrecker, the second leading scorer for the Vixens. And we are underway. Second half for the battle for Ontario at the Quad City Chaos 2015. Ballerina pushing up against that front wall of black blockers from the Vixens. Tries to take an outside line. Rudolph is there to slow her down. Murphy trying to hold her in the pack as well. Ballerina skipping back and forth, trying to escape, and she does lead. Jammer still stuck at the back of the pack. Stalwart defense by CN Power <laughs> is Soul Wrecker. Both packs with some unbelievable defense going alone there and a jam blocker from each team bridging. Ballerina, though, is around scoring. Soul Wrecker finally able to slip through, gets just ahead of the pack. Nash of the Smasher, a nice job to get in front of her, knock her inbounds and drag her all the way back to turn number one as Bala gets through for four points with one. No pass, no point. Yeah, that no pack ended up sending Tara Part and Rudolph to the penalty box. Murphy's going to join them in their light blocker core left on the track for the Vixens. Ballerina looking to get past them. Ballerina sees Reyes on the outside. Beats her with a nice little move on the outside to pick up all four points. But on that gives pass. up four points. A little Ooh. bit of a late call off. Still a pretty successful jam on the part of Ballerina, but those are just, again, tiny little mistakes that yep. you don't want to give up. Score now 88 to 68, a 7 to 4 jam. CN Power's favorite, 28 minutes, 38 seconds remaining in this game. Again, it is a matchup between the WFDDA internationally ranked 
Rideau Valley, number 39, Toronto at 28. Shania Payne on the line, the 1234 Skate Company line for the Vixens, and it's Mad Megs for Toronto CN Power. Nice move by Shania Payne to break through that two wall. Does get knocked to the inside. Stutter step stays in bounds. Unbelievable footwork. And, and at the same time, a cut being called on Mad Megs. Another cut to the Toronto Jammer. So power jam, Vixens. You have to wonder if that hard hit by Shania Payne shook Megs up, made her forget to watch where her feet were, caused the cut. So a bit of jammer on jammer blocking resulting in a power jam for Rideau Valley. And Shania Payne, you know, Having no yeah. luck getting through this wall of white. Nice communication, though. Just took one quick look back at Hannah Murphy, and she led uh, her and another blocker, Butama, into the pack to open things up for Shania Payne, as they do. Five points back on the board now for the Vixen. Suddenly right back into it. 15 points down. Yeah, that quarter's the lead that CN Power had. Goes from 20 to 15 points. 27 minutes, 27 seconds remaining in the first not first half, second half. That's a game. <laughs> we only have 27 minutes left in this game. I wish there was more time. It has been nonstop excitement. Unbelievable. Flying past. The time has been 88 to 73 now is the score. And on the jam line, it's Melanie Austin now with the power start. Mad Meg still in the penalty box. She is standing, so less than 10 seconds on her penalty. Ostentatious comes up against the three wall. Rennie Rumble knocks her out. Hoser, or Met, Mega Boosh picking up where she left off. Nasher the Smasher leading the way, the pivot for Toronto. Nasher has to let her go, lead jammer going to Melanie Austin. Out of the penalty box is Mad Meg. She's fighting her way through the front of the pack as well. She's got sister disaster to beat along with Reyes getting knocked around in turn three and four. Cannot escape the pack and in oh. the pack is Austin scoring points already. There goes Mad Meg, she's escaped. Nice move by Mad Megs using her uh, momentum to pull those blockers off of her. That was a tough wall to get through. Mad Megs, you know, maybe just a slight gap in experience. This is really the first time she's played at this level. She's been playing Derby for a long time and Misfit Melissa Militia, an excellent team, but since they never had WFTDA status, they had a really hard time getting um, opponents of equal quality to them. So for them, to these skaters to uh, really step up at this level, it, it, it is a certain amount of adjustment. It does. It, it takes a bit of experience to, to get comfortable at this level. And Things happen just, faster. They do. Smoke and Cola taking the start for CN Power. This time against Soul Record. The score is 88 to 77, 11 point gap. Rideau Valley able to close it by nine points in the last jam. Soul Record cycled to the back. She has to reset all the way. That's going to allow Smoke and Cola to get lead jammer status, but still stuck in the pack. Wrecker powers her way through that wall and gets through. Still about a half a lap back. Smoke and Cola trying to eat up this track quickly and get around, score some points. It's a slow pack in the second straightaway. See Smoka Cola now enter the pack, goes to the outside, gets knocked out by Batema, calls it off, picked up two points. Yeah, nice isolation work on the part of the CN Power blockers on Lackey, keeping her at the back, refusing to let her go through, isolating her to the inside, allowing Smoka Cola to get through on the outside, picking up that blocker point, extending CN Power's lead to 13 over Rideau Valley, 90 to 77 is the score, under 25 minutes remaining. We're gonna go to an official timeout, and of course, official timeouts are brought to you by Roller Derby Athletics, who provide off-skate training specifically for Derby. Visit them on online at rollerderbyathletics.com. Now, a, a lot of this Rideau Valley Vixens team has been built from within, but they have picked up a few key transfers along the way, including Lackey, the blocker you were just talking about, spent a season here in Toronto and a right. couple seasons for Kingston. And Shania Payne began first skating in Yukon before uh, making her way down to Ottawa. Uh, but primarily, this Rideau Valley Vixens team has been developed from uh, within their own organization. It's been an unbelievable uh, few years as they've built toward uh, this D1 peak that they are currently at. Now looking at the bench, Murphy's skate has basically exploded. I don't oh. know that she's going to be able to get back into this game unless somebody can give her a replacement skate. Yeah, that would be a huge loss. It Hannah is. Murphy, one of the key blockers uh, for this Vixens team in this Rideau Valley League since its formation. So this is an official review for CN Power. Again, taken very early yeah. on in this half. Lion Brian must have seen something that he, he wanted to call in order to use it so quickly. Uh, Flying Brian, of course, getting some experience this year, uh, last year as well at the World Cup with Team Canada. Right. 
And he also uh, worked the bench for uh, the Terminal City All-Stars. So he has indeed. worked WFTDA level, just not here uh, for Toronto yet. It's great to see him here. Yeah, a member of Team Canada's staff. He ran the benches for uh, Team Canada's fourth place team at the uh, 2014 Roller Derby World Cup. Uh, we should give some love to Now Magazine. It's Toronto's altern alternative news and entertainment source. Now Magazine is the official media sponsor of Toronto Roller Derby. NowToronto.com. Great Indie Weekly here in Toronto, still going strong despite the diminishment of print media. Yep. <laughs> now has managed to survive and thrive. All right, looks like we're ready to get underway. It's going to be Ballerina facing off against Shania Payne. It looks like three, three in the packs. Four on four to get things underway. Both jammers trying to force their way through the middle. Shania Payne working her way to the outside. Nasher following and then jukes in and gets through. Lead jammer picked up for the Vixens. Shania Payne continuing her strong play. Ballerina about a half a lap back. Shania Payne coming up now to score. Gets around, aims to kill. He gets knocked to the inside, forced to call it off. Four points picked up. Nice move by Shania Payne, but three stolen by Ballerina at the very end. Never stop skating. There's always points Never. to be gotten. You keep your hustle on. 93 to 81. What was a nine-point difference goes to a 12-point difference because of that hustle by Ballerina. Now, apparently, that was not an official review. Okay. There's a question by CN Power as to the uh, coach Adam had entered the penalty box, uh, I believe, to help Murphy with her uh. skate. Uh, so no official review, just clarification. Okay. Ba Belfast, we have not seen her jam yet this half. Comes out, gets knocked to the inside by Rudolph. A nice quick re-entry has her through as lead jammer. Unfortunately, she's got some skate troubles of her own and forced to call it off. Wow, skates falling apart here in the Battle for Ontario. Yeah, heading to the bench on a single skate. We'll have to see if she can get back into the game. It looks like some, uh, yeah, some truck problems. We will watch that yep. both. Hannah Murphy on the Vixens bench in Belfast finally gets in in some action and uh, forced to call it off as she picked up lead. So with 23 and a half minutes remaining in this game, the score is 93 to 81. CN Power in the lead. CN Power in white. They send Mad Megs to the line. It is Rito Valley in black sending Soul Wrecker. Mad Meg so strong earlier against Boston, having a, a bit of a rough time here, and another track cut called on Mad Megs. She thought she'd re-entered in time. The referee thought not, sends her to the penalty box. Power jam, Vixens. Yeah, the blocker from the Rideau Valley Vixens had just dropped back enough to force that track cut. Hips on hips is what the ref was looking for, and he called the cut. Out of play is going to send Nasher the Smasher to the penalty box and Soul Wreckers off to the races. Down by 12. Three blockers on the track for the penalty kill, led by Tara Part. Aims to kill Misery May out there as well. Schnei Payne comes around the outside, ju jukes in quickly. Loves to use the whole track, an east west skater. And you saw it there. Nice work drawing the blockers out of position. Five of those 12 points of the lead have been erased. Soul Wrecker with one to beat. It's Tara Part. Now she comes up against Misery May and aims at the front. Wrecker's oh. going to call it off. So nice penalty kill from CN Power, limiting the damage. Soul Wrecker only able to get around on one pass. Five points on the board. Seven points now is the difference. 22 minutes to go. Well, Zed Dork indicates there were three points after consulting with parking okay. lot on the outside. The outside back ref, those three points, brings it to a four-point gap. 93 to 89. CN Power still in the lead. But Rideau Valley pushing hard. I would expect nothing less from this game. And Hannah Murphy has got a replacement skate on. Looks like she'll be able to return to the track. Shania Payne taking the star. That's going to be Smoke Cola getting lead jammer for CN Power. Shania Payne also getting through. A no pass, no penalty on that one. And Smoke Cola making quick work of this pack, but it's a quick pace line defense set by the Vixens. Smoke Cola hits it, gets knocked out by Rudolph, calls it her own jammer. A huge hit by Ooh. Santa Muerta. Oh, the Santa Muerta, jam, excuse yes. me, yes. Santa with a big pop, two points grabbed by Smoka Cola as that jam was called off. Now six points is the differential. CN Power grabbing any points they can get, trying to hold off the Vixens. 21 minutes remaining in this game. And uh, what was a 17-point gap at the beginning of the half is down to six. 
Nice work by the Vixens to get back in this one. Melanie Austin on the 1234 Skate Company start line against Ballerina number 905 in the white for Toronto. CN Power does have that defensive position at the back of the pack. I can't hold it though. Nasher once again at the front of the pack, last line of defense. Lead jammer status has been called for. A track. Oh, ostentatious and power jam once again for the Vixens. That track cut on Ballerina. Brennan heading to the box for an out of play block, failure to reform. And now a huge opportunity for, C uh, for, for the Vixens. Nasher desperately trying to hold Austin in the pack. Not going to be able to do it. Five points. It's a one-point game, nerd. And we are sitting now dead pack at turn number three. Ostentatious around very quickly. Looks for a sweep from the inside. Doesn't quite get it. Gets knocked to the outside by Nasher. Smasher, nice job to re-enter quickly. Comes up against Terra Part. Forced out again by Nasher. Takes a look at her bench. Killing a lot of time, though, as Smoke cola gets back onto the track. Or, sorry, excuse me, Ballerina gets back onto the track. And finally forces the call off. Three points on that last pass for Melanie Austin. And that three points gets us our first lead change of the second half. 97 to 95. Rideau Valley Vixens in the lead. 19 and a half minutes remaining in this game. If you would like to talk to us on the Twitters, hashtag Talk2QCC will do the trick. You can also post your thoughts at hashtag QCC2015. We always like to see what you're doing out in social media land. And we are back underway now. Mad Meg's right back out there on the track. Despite her penalty trouble, does a nice job to get lead for CN Power. Trying to stem this ferocious pushback by the Vixens here as we near the midway point of the second half. Soul Wrecker, though, having a hard time getting through the CN Power defense on the second straightaway. Lockdown work here from the defender's pantyhoser, Lady Gagia. Santa Muerta doing a great job on Soul Wrecker, forcing her to the inside. Yeah, I mean, you really got to be impressed by Gaggy and Pantios are really stepping up. Nice two blocking, working over yep. Soul Wrecker. Megs takes a hit from Rudolph, falls down. She and Lackey out of play, being sent off for that. Five points picked up for Mad Megs as Toronto comes right back and retakes the lead. That's triple digits when they put it up on the board. That's 197. Mad Megs coming around another scoring pass. She's in the pack, fighting up against Brennan at the back, and again pushed to the outside, this time by Scarcasm. Oh, and Mad Meg's now going with Batemo's way out of play. And she is forced to rejoin her pack. Another five points picked up for Mad Meg's. But this is a big comeback jam for Meg's, who's had kind of a rough go at, at times in this game. Well, an absolutely huge jam, and Batema cannot contain her again. Another five points. Finally getting out of the pack is Soul Wrecker. Amazing defensive effort by CN Power in that jam to keep Soul Wrecker in the pack for three full scoring passes by Mad Mags. Nice job, 13 points back to the lead now with 17 minutes to go, 13 minutes into this second half. Yeah, nice work from uh, CN Power. And, uh, you know, maybe skaters that might have been considered uh, the second line of CN Power in the past. And uh, as the veterans have retired, they've really moved up. Skaters like Pantyhoser, Santa Muerta, a longtime veteran Lady Gagia as well. Really uh, key players on this CN Power rebuild. Yeah, taking advantage of the opportunity when it was given to them. Shania Payne taking the star this time, going up against Smoka Cola. Smoka Cola runs into the back of Sister Disaster. She's got an outside line, though. She's got a way to get free, but no, Vixens go inside, recycle in front. It's going to be lead jammer to Shania Payne. But only about 50 feet back is Smoka Colon trying to make up a lot of track quickly. But Vixens doing a nice job of, oh, pulling the team. <laughs> wow, the team back aims to kill with a massive hit, saving all of the points. Ouch. Yeah, Shania Payne has been on the receiving end of some pretty big thumps this weekend. She sat out most of the second half after going airborne and crashing <laughs> into Hurricane Heather. Uh, Ames the kill doing a great job of putting her down on that jam. Lead remains 13 points, 110 to 97. See in power in the lead. It is Ballerina taking the star against Melanie Austin for the Vixens. 16 minutes to go in the closing game of the opening day of the 2015 Quad City Chaos. The battle for Ontario, the top two ranked teams in this province. And what a scrappy start. Neither jammer getting much leeway. Finally, an inside opened up for Melanie Austin. She is your lead jammer. 
Once again for the Vixens, that's two in a row. Santa Muerte heading to the penalty box. No pivot on the track for CN Power. Batema once again, the last line of defense, but Ballerina through on her initial pass. Well, Batema really able to stretch it to that 20-foot mark, putting that last hit on four points picked up by the Vixens. Able to slow down the CN Power just enough to get those four. Nine points is the separation. 110 to 101. One Nelly. Midway point of the second half. Let's give some love to Rumbling Rage. Rumbling Rage Derby Shop is Canadian roller derby owned and based in Barrie, Ontario. Their mission is to provide you with accessible, high quality products to play roller derby. And strange enough, there's someone named Renny Rumble out on the track right now who might be someone involved with Maybe. Rumbling Rage. Why don't you go to Rumbling Rage and find out? Yeah. All right, back on the track. It is Mad Megs once again jamming for CN Power, and she is at the front facing off against a three wall, and that's Sister Disaster back on the jam line for the Vixens, and she also facing a three wall. Mad Megs finally able to power her way through. It's Hannah Murphy back on the track for the Vixens. Sister Disaster having a hard time, getting knocked around. Yeah, Ames, uh, Nasher, and Rennie Rumble doing that tripod blocking, hand-to-hand -hand blocking, and doing a great job of holding Sister Disaster up. Santa Muerta comes out of the penalty box, promptly picks up a back block, and goes right back into the penalty box. Everyone's in the penalty wow. box. Wow. All the blockers are off the track. That's a, They'll have to get them back on there. Jam gets called off, thankfully, for the referees, as every, every single CN Power blocker picked up a yeah. penalty in that jam. And it looks like they were all getting called for out-of-play calls. <laughs> Perhaps a failure to reform that pack. But there was a lot of chopping going on yes, from that was. inside ref crew there. Three points picked <laughs> up by CN Power regardless. 113 to 101 is the score. 13 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in this game. Jam underway. And this reminds me a lot of a matchup between these two teams oh, two yeah. years ago, almost to the day at the 2013 Quad City Chaos. What a rivalry it has become. It looks like a back oh. block being called on Shania Payne. It's going to be a power jam now for CN Power. Rudolph picking up an out of play. Nash are finally reporting to the penalty box. And off to the races, Smoke a Cola on this power jam. Wow, huge penalty troubles here for both of these teams. This penalty crew, I don't know if it's just they're getting matched up with the right teams, but this penalty crew has called a lot of penalties today. It was the same crew that worked a penalty a game with 108 penalties earlier today. They did indeed. Lackey's going to pick up an out of play. Uh, the blocker that she thought she had with her to form the pack had been reported to the penalty box, so she was way out of play. Chaos Sh on the track, nerd. Shania Payne back on the track. Getting through her initial pass. It looks like Smoke Cola is going to try and get one more pass. A nice little apex jump. Picks up four, calls it off. CN Power extends the lead now to 128, 103, 104. Make that 24 point lead. Biggest lead of the game biggest, so far. Biggest lead of the game. Three points picked up by Shania Payne at the end. But CN Power doing a great job. Oh, wait. A single point removed from CN Power side. 14 to 3 on that jam. 127. 104, but it is a thing. We're going to get an official review Woo. by Coach Adam Coach and Adam. the Rideau Valley Vixens. Again, these official timeouts are brought to you by Roller Derby Athletics. Roller Derby Athletics wants you to be strong, fierce, and unstoppable. You can find out more at rollerderbyathletics.com. We'd also like to tell you about Come As You Are. Founded in 1997, Come As You Are Cooperative is the world's only anti-capitalist, sex-positive, worker-owned sex shop Check them out in person if you happen to be in Toronto or visit comeasyouare.com to learn more. So yeah, we, you were talking about that game back in 2013 where basically it was neck and neck the entire yeah. game until a, a mistake by CN Power in the dying minutes of that game allowed Rideau Valley to take control and win. Yep. Um, it yeah, seems second like, last jam, the yeah. Rideau Valley Vixens took the lead in that game. So, and it seems like this game is going <laughs> to that script. 12 minutes, 18 seconds. Uh, whichever team makes a little mistake, the other team just jumps on them as quickly as they can. That last jam was chaos. Both jammers having to, to skate around. Everybody going to the penalty box left and right. Penalties are racking up on both sides. I'm seeing aims to kill is at five on yep. CN Power. 
It looks like Hannah Murphy also at five for this, the Vixens. They seem to be the two skaters in the most trouble. The penalties, once again, pretty spread out <laughs> along the two teams. Yeah, very good bench management on both sides <laughs> to even out the damage. Some more good news. Belfast is back on the bench for CN Power as well. So both skaters, one from each team who had some skate troubles, have fixed their gear and they're back on the tracks for their team. On the track, it is Soul Wrecker jamming in the black for the Vixens, and uh, Ballerina in the white taking lead jammer status for Toronto CN Power. Soul Wrecker finding her way past Panty Hoser on the outside. She gets out as well. And Ballerina making now a nice quick move around turn number one, falls, calls it, picks up at least a point, and it looks like she'll get two there to help extend the lead briefly. You've got an uh, update for us, Captain Lou? I do that. Official review was by the Rideau Valley Vixens. They were challenging the apex jump. They did not believe that she had landed a foot in bounds. The jammer referee uh, confirmed that she had indeed put a single foot down inside the inbounds part of the track. That gives her the full points and the points stand as they were initially reported. All right, and here is Belfast now back on the bench and back on the track very quickly for Toronto. But it's going to be Melanie Austin sneaking through on the inside to pick up a lead jammer status for the Vixens. And Belfast still scrapping her way through turn number two as Lackey comes back onto the track for the Vixens. Full pack for the team in black. Belfast looks like she's full of vim and vigor from having sat on the bench for the last 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> Wants to get out of the pack and fights her way through. Austin knocked to the inside. She's going to have to call it off. Let's see how many points she picked up. Three, three points for the Vixens. That's going to put them back to 22 points down on CN Power. 129 to 107, 10 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in this game. Again, a matchup between the number 39 and 28 ranked team in the WFTDA. Top two ranked teams in Ontario. That's right, and uh, the number three and four teams currently in the nation of Canada right now in Division One. The WFDA playoffs. Med Megs out there on the line against Shania Payne. This has been a great battle this half between these two. And it looks like a back block. The second back block being called on Shania Payne this half. Power jam for CN Power and Mad Megs. Big opportunity here for the hosts now to try and build on their lead. Yeah, Shania Payne not pleased at all with picking up that back block. But she did apply force to the back of the wall. Sprung her way through. Creating that gap will get you the penalty. And now going to work is Mad Megs, one to beat at the front. <laughs> That's Reyes, who is not given an inch, but she's going to have to. It's out of play. Reyes is going to have to report to the penalty box. And five points going to CN Power. For fans of Canadian roller derby, Reyes, a skater formerly known as Margaret Choke. Oh, yeah. Now skating under her real name, Maggie Reyes. This is the first weekend we've seen her with her real moniker on the back of her jersey. Mad Megs, a nice, clean, easy pass for five, but Shania Payne bursting out of the box, bursting through the pack, and making up a lot of ground on Megs quickly. Hits her hard, forces the call off. No points on that pass for either team. Man, Shania Payne was on a mission when she came out of that penalty box. Those 10 points are going to make it a 22-point gap. But, yeah, Shania Payne just roared through that pack, caught up. I mean, Mad Megs had about a half lap on her, yeah. and Shania Payne made it up in no time, put a hit on Mad Megs, forced her to call it off. But Mad Megs already doing the damage. 10 points for CN Power, 139, 107, nine minutes remaining. Smoke a cola taking the star for CN Power, and now Soul Wrecker for the Vixens. Soul Wrecker out first. Three wall, though. Rennie Rumble, Nasher the Smasher, aims to kill, doing a nice job in the defense. Three wall of Vixens at the back, trying to contain Smoke a cola. Cannot do it. Gets through on the outside. Lee Jimmer. For Toronto, 8.40 to go. And again, Toronto doing an impressive job of holding up Soul Wrecker. Randy Rumble's going to pick up another play. That's going to let Soul Wrecker get free, but Smokey Cole is around the track, picks up four points. She's going to run the clock, I believe. We'll see how close she lets Soul Wrecker like get. No, she's going to keep on going, Derby Nerd. Yeah, and there's only two blockers on the track for Toronto, so a risky move here by CN Power. The swap in time for penalty time. Points yep. for penalty time. Smoke cola does get through, though. 4-4 four, four on that pass. So 8-4 lead right now for Smoke cola Both jammers back in the back. A big hit from Scarcasm. This may be the break that CN Power needs on this jam. But no, nice work by Rudolph. Dragging Smoke cola back. Still a full minute left in this jam. Smoke cola is lead jammer. She can end it whenever she wants. 
Smoke and oh. getting knocked around in the back and through the front is going to be sole record for another four nerd. There was a cut being called. I'm not sure who that was assessed to. Oh, it looks like it Scar. is going to be a blocker on Toronto. Yeah, that was Scar Kasman picked it up. Five more points for Smoke and Cola. That ends up being a 13 to 8 jam. 152, 115. CN Power able to free their penalty box. Uh, so a risky move, but it, it, it pays off in the end. And we're going to get a timeout. That timeout is going to be taken by the Rideau Valley Vixens. And, of course, you know, when you get to timeout number five in a game, Derby Nerd, yes. Roller Derby Athletics demands, because they are sponsoring these timeouts, <laughs> that you have to stand up at home. Everybody stand up. Start doing squats. Ah, yeah. Because uh, this game's been exciting, and we want to see you doing squats at home. Well, we can't see you, but I'm sure you can hashtag Twitter us in. Hashtag QCC2015. Show us pictures of you doing squats while the game is in timeout or talk to QCC and let us know why you don't want to do squats. You're yeah. sitting at home watching roller derby. Yeah, if you, if you don't want to do it, let us know as well. And if you do want to do it, then please show us. Uh, if you've been following the uh, Facebook page That's for this right. event, you've been seeing that uh, squats for uh, Quad City Chaos has been going on for quite some time now. So get it on the action. Be part of this event if you can't be here in person. But you should be here in person. A great crowd all day at the 2015 Quad City Chaos. You're taking a look now at uh, turn number two where the crowd likes to build up, and it's been a very smart crowd as well. Yes, indeed. Jam going to get underway. Only seven minutes and 21 seconds remaining. CN Power building their lead in dying minutes of this game, 152 to 115. It's going to be Ballerina taking the star in white for CN Power, and in black it is Melanie Austin, number 91 for the Vixens. Jam is underway. Both jammers cautiously approaching the back of that pack. The Vixens do have power position in the back. Ballerina following Melanie Austin. Austin does get through on the outside, does pick up lead jammer. Santa Muerta heading to the penalty box. No pivot on the track for Toronto. Ballerina trying to find a way through this experienced, tough Vixens pack on the second straightaway. Almost through, rolls out of it, gets through on her initial pass. Austin has four, a little bit of confusion. Her bench imploring her to skate forward as Ballerina hits the pack, scoring points now. So Coach Adam rolling the dice a bit. Austin with an advantage of blockers on the track. Going to pick up another five as Smoka Cola gets cycled back. It is a 10 to nothing jam, 9 to nothing jam so far. Smoka Cola will have some points. Or sorry, Ballerina, Ballerina will have some points. And a nice hit out. Pantyhose is going to be drawing. Austin back, and they're still going to keep this running, nerd. Yeah, interesting uh, decision. Oh, down. And oh. that's a mistake. Ouch. So decision does not pay off on this case, and Ballerina, who's kind of just been patiently dancing around the pack, now finally makes her way through. So nice work from uh, Ballerina, who I guess we can call a veteran blocker now, or jammer now. I think we can. She's <laughs> had a full season and a bit under her belt. A couple seasons with the Bruisers before that. And Ballerina now working her way on this power jam. Gets through. Reyes to oh. beat. Takes a big hit. Nice quick re-entry, though. Oh, and Reyes able to draw wow. that track cut. Interesting. Tough. That was a tight call. That was a tight call. We'll have to go back and watch it later. Again, yeah. all, these, all these games will be up on the Layer9.ca site. Archived shortly after they finish. The games from earlier today already on there. Catch up. Tune in tomorrow. Four more points on that last pass for Melanie Austin. There were four points uh, in the box for well. Ballerina. Yep. So we'll just check and see official reviews. Not so strangely taken by CN Power. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm going to assume it was on that cut. It was right in front of their bench. Yeah. It's. I mean, again, we don't have quite the same angle. that it, She looked fine from here, but we don't have that angle that the uh, jam right. ref has right next to her. Yep. So, I mean, I, I understand taking the official review at this point, I mean, you don't get to yep. keep it, but I think it's it's one of those ones that you know you feel <laughs> might have been a wrong call, but it's really hard to get really it overturned to get at this point. Yeah. Ballerina from the bench, also uh, as you just saw on your TV screen, disagreeing with that call <laughs> as well. 
unsurprisingly. <laughs> we should give some more love to our sponsors. 1234 Skate Co. supplies Peterborough and the surrounding 705 area with roller skates and roller derby equipment. They offer skate maintenance classes, fresh meat training, and minimums testing. You can find out about them at 1234skateco.com. They also happen to be the Jammerline sponsor of Quad City Chaos. And the official vendor of uh, Toronto Roller Derby in 2015. Yeah, we should again. once again mention Nerd Roller Skates, which is Calgary's only quad skate shop, now offering free shipping in Canada with orders over $150. Find them at nerdskates.com. Quad City Chaos will be back again tomorrow for day two. More Division One action, more B-team action as well. We kick things off tomorrow a little later in the day at 11 a.m. is our first game. It's going to be a B-team showdown between Toronto's Bay Street Bruisers, the hosts against the Boston B-Party one of the most venerable B-teams in all of roller derby. Yes, indeed. We will be continuing after that at 1 p.m. with uh, a Division One game between the Rideau Valley Vixens and uh, the Boston Massacre. That should be an outstanding bout. Yeah. The Bruisers back on the track at 3 for a showdown against the Steel Beamers, the B-team from Steel City. And then finally, we will close off the Quad City Chaos 2015 with another game simulcast on WFTDA.TV. Toronto CN Power hosting Steel Hurton which should be an excellent game if today's games are any indication. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you go by the numbers that we've seen in today's games, all of those games are, are, are winnable by either team. Yep. I mean, it, it's been close games all day. Uh, little mistakes allow teams to, to build up those leads. But in every game, both teams have been in it for a good chunk of it. So I'm yeah. expecting some more fireworks on Sunday. And there have been critical errors, too, in these games that have led to that as well. So uh, we're getting the explanation now to the bench. Blind Brian William coming back, not looking happy. So I'm going to assume the call is not going to be overturned. I suspect you're as correct. We suspect the, the Jammer F had good position. I'm sure he's very confident in his call. So that's going to stand. We're back underway. Power start for Shania Payne and her Rideau Valley Vixens. 32 points separate these teams. Five minutes and 14 seconds remain. And it is a full contingent on the track for this penalty kill for CN Power, led by the pivot, Rennie Rumble. Reyes immediately comes in, tries to open up the outside. Sister Disaster goes in and does successfully open up that inside lane. Nice sweep inside out for the Vixens. Lead jammer for Shania Payne. Confirmation that, yes, that jammer penalty did stand which is not surprising as she's still in the penalty box <laughs> Shania Payne making quick work of this pack gets through for five points at them spread out around turn number two See what Back. Ballerina has to do with uh, last time Shania Payne picked up a penalty she came out of the penalty box on fire see what Ballerina can do nice another nice clean pass for Shania Payne and five more points on the board for the Vixens Ballerina now also getting through though in the second straightaway she is through in her initial pass See if the Vixens run the bench again as they uh, run the uh, clock again as they did last time. Yes, and they are giving they are indication indeed. they're going to keep this going. Yeah, I think they like the fact that they have lead jammer status. Ballerina hammered to the inside by Sister Disaster. Has to pick herself up, and here comes Shania Payne. 13 points already in this jam. Wow, very quick work from Shania Payne in a, a minute picking up 13 points. Having some trouble now, though, against that four wall of CN Plyer blockers, and Ballerina is able to get through. She's picked up four points of her own. Nice stretch back from that, led by Nash of the Smasher. Yeah, she had two 360 twirls right on the inside line, stayed in bounds. Four more points, no points picked up by Ballerina on that last pass. Four points on the previous pass. Rideau Valley, 17 to four advantage, a 13 point differential in that jam, and now a 19 Whew. point differential in this game. Back under 19, only three and a half minutes to go. Once again, you're watching the Quad City Chaos here live from the bunker in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I'm the Derby Nerd with Captain Lou Albamo. And we're breathless from the action. Belfast taking the star against Soul Wrecker. CN Power has done a great job in this half shutting down Soul Wrecker. Soul Wrecker having a ton of trouble getting past these blockers from CN Power. And a huge hit by Brennan <laughs> is going to send Belfast to the ground and she's going to have to cycle back. Wow, nice work from Brennan again, throwing her weight around this track all game. Hannah Murphy heading to the penalty box. Neither jammer able to get through at all. Lady Gagia this time dragging Soul Wrecker back. Finally a jammer gets through, and Belfast is your lead jammer after a 35-second battle, and it's going to be a cut to Soul Wrecker. Advantage and momentum shifting back to Toronto's favor. 
And on that previous pass, Murphy picked up a penalty. That's her sixth. So she ah. only has one left to give. Defense strong in the pack. The direction of gameplay is going to send Bottoma Botema to the penalty box. Only two blockers left on the track. Now just Reyes. Oh, this time Brennan couldn't connect yeah. on the hit. And Reyes was the last line of defense, was too far out of play. Murphy back on the track, has to be careful. Easy pass by Belfast there. Now runs up against Brennan and Reyes at the front. Hoser being sent off the track on a track cut. But Wrecker back on very quickly through the pack on her initial pass. And that's going to force a call off from Belfast. Toronto taking back a bit of a lead here with only two minutes to go. That 24 point lead, five points. No, sorry, make that a 28 point lead. Nine points by Belfast. Hard earned points on that power jam. Knocked to the ground multiple times. One minute and 38 seconds remaining in this game. The Vixens with only a single timeout. They're going to save it. And I, if CN Power gets lead jammer, they can kill the clock in yep. this game. So this is very important for the Vixens to get lead jammer. Smoke a cord. Only one to beat, it's Rudolph at the front. Oh, Sam Power with lead jammer status. She is through, and Melanie Austin having a hard time at the back of that pack, but she is relentlessly trying to force her way through. Rennie Rumble last to beat, she is done. Initial pass complete, able to score points, but quick. Four picked up for Smoka Cola. Lion Bryan looks like he's gonna yep. run Smoka Cola, kill the rest of the time in this game. Austin coming around on a scoring pass, but Smoka Cola on her second scoring pass. CN Power willing to trade points for time. And I don't think I disagree with that move at all, Derby Nerd. No, not at all. And Smoka Cole has had a relatively clean game. And as you can see, the smarts there to drag herself back out of bounds before standing. They have the game in complete control right now with 28 points to go. Both jammers picking up points. Smoka Cola already has a few on this pass, and she's looking to complete it. Makes oh. a nice move around Sister Disaster, stays in bounds. And that'll be. The full four for Smoka Cola. That's another play on Potema. A runny rumble sent to the penalty box. Melanie Austin now has an opportunity to get through with only one to beat. Gets by Nasher the Smasher. Puts four points on the board. Five seconds left in this period. Smoka Cola will be able to call it off when she gets past Sister Disaster. She looks to the bench. And the crowd is cheered. The crowd is. Keep running it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> sending Smoka Cola to the end of this jam. Wow. CN Power, the hosts, holding on for the win. 186 to 154. It is unofficial. But let's wait. Some confusion on the Vixens bench. They seem uh, almost flabbergasted that it's really over. But it is. That's it. Wow. Unbelievable game, at Captain Lou, oh, and fantastic. a big victory for the hosts. It is, and it, it is. I mean, they avenged their loss from 2013. Vixens really gave them a lot of pressure in this game. Uh, some stumbles near the beginning of that second half allowed CN Power to, to really increase that gap, but the Vixens came roaring back near the end of this game, and it's only CN Power's hard effort in the last five minutes yeah. that allowed them to preserve this 32-point lead. Now, I haven't done the complete math on this yet, but it's my understanding that with the weighting of both these teams, this will actually benefit both sides. Right, yeah. Both, both will come away with a, a ranking points victory, but more importantly, CN Power comes away with the victory on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's right, the moral victory, the exactly. W as it were, and that's 2-0 and now for CN Power here at the Quad City Chaos with the big win over Boston and now Rideau Valley. And, uh, you know, a lot of people talking about the CN Power team in Toronto rebuilding this year. And, you know, it looks like it's going to be a pretty successful rebuild. Yeah, I'd say it's rebuilt already, Derby Nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say it's rebuilt already. Because uh, the Vixens already proved today that they are a tough, tough team taking down Steel City and then giving CN Power all they could handle. So, I mean, only beating them by 32 points, some people might say, wow, you know, 28 yeah. only beating the 39 by 28 uh, by, by 32 points. That's not much. Vixens are a tough team, so I, I, I think the CN Power rebuild looks pretty darn good for 2015. Now, they have only once before in the six years of Quad City Chaos gone 3-0 and on the weekend. Yes. They have that opportunity tomorrow. They do against Steel City. Again, uh, if you want to tune into that, it will be 
A simulcast again here on WFTDA.TV. That'll be tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, CN Power will be in action against Steel Hurton. Uh, if you're a Rideau Valley Vixens fan and you want to tune in, you should tune in tomorrow to catch them take on the Boston Massacre. That game will come at you live at 1 p.m. So Boston Massacre versus uh, the Rideau Valley Vixens. Got a full slate of games. There it is on your screen right now. And there will be an MVP ceremony, of course, around 7 p.m. afterwards. All of the action will be live on Layer9.ca, the 5 o'clock game simulcast on WFTDA.com. TV. I, I think that's going to be a wrap. Yeah, I think it'd be crazy to miss the action oh, tomorrow. Crazy. Especially after today's yeah. unbelievable action. Uh, and if you did miss any of the action today, again, go over to layer9.ca. The YouTube footage will be up. Uh, fantastic work on the part of Mr. Force once again, yeah. bringing the footage to the world of roller derby out there. We love him. We do. Visit his site. Dig through his site. It's a wonderful archive of roller derby action, um, Canadian and uh, beyond. Big thanks also to Honey Boom Boom, our director and our leader here uh, at Layer 9 Productions. So big thanks to her. She's been on the, uh, the camera and the switchers all night. You know, for the crew here at the Quad City Chaos, I'm the Derby Nerd here with Captain Lou Albamo. Again, we'll be back on the air tomorrow at 11 a.m., Tune in to Quad City Chaos 2015. Ooh, nice. Good game. <laughs> awesome. Good game. That was no cakewalk at all. CN Power had to do everything they could to, to keep that solid. Yeah. All right, good effort, though, man. Yeah, CN Power looks good. They do. Like the, the blocking's still there, and I think that jammer rotation's pretty darn good. I they think clean. jammer rotation's actually... Yeah, it might be stronger. Yeah, I know. Stronger than it was. It. I think if they can clean Megs up. Yep. Uh, Which I think it will. It will. Yeah. Uh, and Ballerina's looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. They that defense had some really nice stands against Soul Wrecker. Yes. Yeah. Half. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if Murphy did foul out at the end. Oh, she did, eh? Yeah, picked up an elbow last jam. Good games. Good games.